trader tina here once again from shortmeetina.com with my daily recap uh today is thursday so hopefully you're having an enjoyable thursday you've almost made it to the end of the week tomorrow is friday and when that comes i will say tgif so before we get into a recap of the overall markets let me welcome you if this is your very first time tuning into a short me tina video i'd like to say welcome in the comment section do us a solid drop us a comment say hi hello what what have you uh, again i generally say hi back if you're returning welcome back also do us a solid drop a comment in the comment section so again before i recap the overall markets similar to what i did yesterday i'm gonna concentrate on the four indexes as well as transport until the market more or less begins to i don't know i guess find its footing footing or at least be directionally biased right now i think we are somewhat caught up in this uh churn or chop and so until it resolves itself, uh, I think it's fitting to just more or less stick, stick to the numbers that I am paying attention to uh, within the major indexes. So we're going to start it off as usual with the S&P 500, the SPY. Right now you're looking at a chart of the SPY. It's a daily chart dating back to 2017. So essentially uh, we're up 0.26% on the day. So for all intents and purposes, let's say that we are flat on the day. The market did a lot of things, I believe, at one point. Last night, the futures were red, uh, pardon, it was green, then it turned red, we opened up green or red, it was just a lot of chaos today. And so I actually took a step back from the market and I said, you know what, I already have the price points that I'm paying attention to, I've already maintained my position, so I'm not going to let this churn kind of like, um, uh, I'm not going to let this churn kind of have me prematurely exit any of my positions. I've already had my, I already have my game plan laid out, uh, and so I'm going to follow that to a T. Uh, again, I've already have my levels, whether it be in the market or individual stocks, and so I'm going to follow my plan. I'm not going to let like these sort of knee-jerk reactions that we've been seeing for the past few trading days. Uh, Trump tweets, this happened, uh, no resolution to the trade war, we sell off, possible resolution to the trade war, um, or a, a, a pending deal with China, we go up a few percentage points. And that's kind of been the uh, theme for the past few days. And that's not the best way to tra trade, in my opinion, unless you're really trading that level of volatility or you're a day trader. If you're a swinger position trader like myself, and again, you kind of block out the noise and you stick to a longer term orientation and you focus on your trading plan. And hence, that's what I've done. Uh, also, too, that's why there's still very minimal damage uh, into my account. And uh, year to date, I'm still up uh, double digits despite all the nonsense that's going on anyway so let's again focus in that was a segue sideways so let's get back to the charts daily chart dating back to 2017 like i've indicated before the spy is within a range the lower end of that range we can say it's 260 upper end of that range is 293 to 295 uh we for the first time in June of 2019, around May to June of 2019, we breached those levels. Going as high as 302, I said, well, wow, we're above a, cru a critical or crucial level of resistance. That is our cue to go long. Uh, we ran up a few, uh, you know, we ran up a few points to then pull back. And uh, since then, we've kind of been in a mini, we can say a mini range for the past uh, two or so trading weeks. We can say the lower end of that range is 280 and the upper end of that range is 293 to 295. So for me, Granted, we closed at 284.65, so we're right sandwiched in between that range. Again, the lower end of that range right here, the shorter term, clocks in at around uh, 280 to 282. The upper end clocks in around 293 to 295. Uh, directionally, if we break above 293 to 295, one can conclude that that is bullish, and I would lean more towards the bullish side. If we break down 280, uh, and I think coincidentally that also is in line with the 200-day moving average, I believe it's around 279, 280, somewhere around there. If we break that, then one can incline lead a little bit more uh, towards the bearish side. So if we end up uh, breaking 280, and I'm not quite sure if we're going to do that, the next uh, level uh, that I'm paying attention to would, would be this line, and that's around 273. So if we break 280, I think we, we go to 273. I'll be more bearish than if we break. 273 more than likely we will drop to 260 which is the lower end of this range that has started uh, or that did start back in uh, 2017 so I'm paying attention to that whatever happens in the middle like today happens I'm just focusing on those main uh, points or those main um, uh, levels which will signal to me 
directionally, in my opinion, what the market wants to do. And if you're not faring so well in the market, I suggest that you do the same thing. Highlight your points and not really concern yourself with what's going on in the middle. Take a step back and I, I, and I guarantee you, your life will be that much more, um, uh, I don't know, I guess your days will be easier to get through, all right, without all the chaos that's been going on in the market. What else? All right, IWM daily chart, like I stated yesterday and like I just recently recapped with the SPY, not going to concern myself with too much of what's going on in the middle, just going to pay attention to those, uh, what I referred to yesterday, to yesterday as extreme levels. We can call the bottom end of that extreme, support that clocks in at 144 to 145. And just to show you like how this actually makes sense, so what was today's low? Today's low, we went as low as 144.79, hitting support and then we got that bounce, right? So that should reinforce you that is truly a level of support. Again, going back all the way until again, uh, towards the ending of 2017, you'll see how that level has held. I mean, I, I have the chart up here. I hope it's as uh, visible or easy, or as easy to spot for you as it is for me. And if it's not, don't worry. These things sort of, or your, your uh, visibility uh, to these sorts of things usually uh, improve over time or after seeing charts over and over again. At any rate, so you can see again, it held here, 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 and most recently here. So for me, 144, 145 is support held for about two years. Anything below that, then I'm going to assume that sh sentiment is shifting. On the upper end, again, we can call that 160, another area we have had difficulties penetrating outside of this highlighted area here. If at some point we manage to actually get back to 160 and penetrate and break to the upside, I'm going to assume what happened uh, in May of 2018 after we broke 160 and ran all the way to around 174 or 175, I'm going to suspect that the likelihood of that happening uh, if we break 160 again, increases. So again, not too concerned with the stuff in the middle, just paying attention to the two extremes. A break above or below will directionally tell me where the market wants to go. Anything else in the middle, that's between the markets and whoever is uh, generating those sorts of price levels, All right? So what else? All right, and so we have the uh, Dow Jones, DIA daily chart dating back to January of 2018, up about 0.5%, again, less than 1% on the day close at 256.36. So if you go back to the video that I did yesterday, right, and yesterday's low clocked in at around uh, 255.06, and I believe we closed at 255.08, and I said, well, uh, it seems based on the chart, the Dow was actually sitting on support, so we should get a bounce uh, today. And that's actually what happened. If we zoom in, you'll see, right, the low of uh, today clocked in at around uh, 253.92. So slightly above, uh, uh, pardon, slightly below that support level of 255. And we got that bounce to close at uh, 256.36. And it seems, as though some, it seems as though some buyers actually stepped in. Again, that perhaps had a lot, perhaps has a lot to do with uh, what went on with Walmart uh, on a percentage basis, it was up uh, pretty high for today. So heading into tomorrow, the remainder of the week, third quarter, uh, that's what I'm going to be paying attention to with the Dow. Obviously, if we can stay above that 255, 253 to 255 level, then we're above support. We can say, great. If we break below there, chances are, like I indicated yesterday, more than likely we will revisit June's low of around 247. So a little bit more downside. Let's see. Don't concern yourself too much with the middle. Focus on price points, all right? Or turning points or pivot points. What else? And then we have the QQQ uh, daily chart, again, dating back to around uh, April of 2017. But I kind of want to focus in on price action uh, beginning in around uh, late October of 2018. So we're up about 0.2% on the day. I see a quote here of 183.25. So similar to the SPY, IWM, the Dow, I'm just paying attention to what I would consider sort of pivot points above this bullish below this bearish. And for me, the pivots for the QQQ, for those who did not listen to my video yesterday, I'm not sure why you didn't because I do them for free every single day. You should be tuned in and dialed in every day. And if you are, just do me a favor in the comment section, say hello. Again, it, get, it helps to generate the word uh, when folks are engaged, even if it's a quick high. 
and I'll, and also too, uh, if you would do a quick thumbs up if you're getting any sort of value from this video. Anyway, that was a segue. Let's get back to the points at hand with the QQQ. So like I indicated yesterday, I'm looking at support, which clocks in at around 176 to 178. This blue line here, we're above that, great. And I'm, I'm paying attention to resistance. The line is a little bit crooked. Let me straighten it. Uh, and that clocks in at around uh, 189 to 190. We're a little bit uh, below that. So again, like I've indicated before, above that 189 to 190 level, I'm going to be bullish. Below that 176 to 178 line, I have to lean more to the bearish side, even if it's in the shorter term. So not concerning myself with all this gyration here, which is a lot of craziness in my opinion, focusing on the extremes, all right? What else? All right, uh, and then we have the transport daily chart dating back to 2017, but let's focus in on sort of this channel that has emerged uh, beginning towards the uh, ending of October uh, of 2018. All right, so we're off about uh, a little over 1%. I see a quote here of 156.94. The low clocked in at fifth, um, pardon, the low clocked in at uh, 56.62. So we closed uh, slightly above the low of today. So that's not that great considering the high was 57.76. So pay attention tomorrow. What are the support levels? And I'm going to just talk about them and not really resistance because we're closer to support. So support comes in at around 55 to 56. You can see dating back to October of 2018. Hence why I want to focus on that. That's about a year. For a year, for the most part, that level has held. Granted, we can uh, highlight this area here. Uh, and that's what occurred in December of 2018 when the markets were just uh, losing its cool. Everything was selling off, right? So with the exception of that, for about a year, we've traded above 55. So similar to what I stated with, I believe, the IWM, if we break this crucial level of support, I'm going to conclude that similar to what happened in December, January will happen now. But we're not there yet and again when the break occurs it should occur with volume like we saw here right now there isn't really much volume going on all right so that's what i'm paying attention to with the transport what else all right so let's uh wrap it up and round it out with gold ticker gld daily chart let's pay attention to price action beginning in june of 2013 let me condense this a little bit more so we're looking at about or paying attention to at least about six years worth of data right so gold simple cycling through two points for the past uh, six years fast forward until fast forward to june of 2019 finally broke through and it was kind of like no looking back since then so since breaking through that upper end of the channel which clocks in at around 130 we've uh, broken through to now we're bumping into secondary resistance we can call that level around uh 142 to 144 so we closed at 143.70 uh and so for me you can play this several ways uh, i'll leave it to you to decide how to play it but what i'm paying attention to obviously is 142 to 144. if we continue to trend up and break above that level which is this blue line then uh we can conclude that Gold more than likely can see 150 because there's very little overhead. Let me remove this. Uh, if you take that out, you can see. It. And actually, for for the for for me to illustrate the point, I think it needs to be there. But there's just too many lines. Let me take this one out. And let me take this one out. All right. So as you can see here, there's no resistance. Absolutely none. So if it breaks above this line here of around uh, 142 to 144, one can conclude it'll be very easy for it to get to uh, 148 to 150 because we have not seen those levels, believe it or believe it or not, since 2013. So it'll be a whole new territory uh, for gold at least in the last six years. So that's what I'm paying attention to. And you should too as well. So again, let's uh, wrap it up and round it out with gold. Tina here, once again from shortmetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of this video, I'd like you to do three things for me. One, comment in the comment section. Are you in gold? Are you buying gold? What about the SPY, IWM? Uh, what do you think about the markets, the transport? How are you positioned right now in this market? Are you in? Are you out? Are you taking some time off? Are you trading? Are you losing your shit? Are you making money? 
again comment in the comment section uh two i do videos monday through friday no matter what if the stock market is open a video will be up so if you don't want to miss anything make sure that you are subscribed at our youtube channel at short metina again it's super important in terms of getting the word out and again i do this every single day free of charge just sharing the information i've learned uh, over the course of the years and lastly lastly my friend i've been trading for well over 15 years been in the markets for a very long time so if you think you can learn anything from me and i think that you can make sure that you are signed up at our website shortmetina.com so definitely head on over to shortmetina.com sign up become a member thank you for listening and as always thank you for your support i will talk to you tomorrow Let's <laughs> go.